This is 3Q's interviews with Dr. Cater. Dr. Oh. Cater is a cardiologist that I met during one of my advanced physical exam courses back in freshman year or first year of medical school. Right. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, like you said, my name is George. Um, I'm an advanced cardiac imaging fellow here uh, this year at UPMC. Um, my training sort of started at the University of Michigan. I did uh, chemical engineering and then a master's in biomedical engineering. Went to uh, the Lerner College of Medicine in Cleveland for medical school, um, and then I've actually been at UPMC uh, for throughout my you know, post uh, medical school training, um, leading up to today. So you went from Michigan to Ohio. I'm from I'm from Columbus. So yeah. happy to see you made a good transition there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what point in your education did you realize you wanted to do cardiology? Yeah, so it was actually pretty early on in, in medical school. I think it was a second year medical student when I was learning about uh, like cardiac pathology. I think that's really what sparked my interest. Is It's so closely related to sort of the engineering concepts that I um, had learned in, in you know, undergrad and, and my master's. Um, it's just a very uh, translatable subject. Um, you know, the physics makes sense, uh, the way that sort of the, the pathology and the treatments work, uh, all are really very logical, uh, numbers-based, and evidence-based. So I think that's really sort of the big things for me, why I, I, uh, I like cardiology sort of from the get-go and kind of you know, always did research and things like that in cardiology throughout. That is something that I noticed. We, we had our cardiology course, and the fluid dynamics is really oh, yeah. is prevalent, and it's a really important part. And it's incredibly important. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it makes it really interesting. Uh, as far as day-to-day um, -day life uh, for you, what, what's a typical day for you at the hospital here? Yeah, sure. This year is a little bit different for me, uh, focusing on cardiac imaging. Um, but uh, so day-to-day -day it can vary. Sometimes I'm doing uh, you know, structural echo stuff with the interventionalists, helping them place uh, mitral clips, um, you know, uh, AST and PFO closure devices. Um, sometimes I'm in the cardiac uh, MR reading room, uh, learning how to um, you know, interpret those studies, um, you know, assisting with the, the post-processing, helping the tech scan the patients. Uh, and then coronary CT is another big thing I'm going to be getting into in the next couple um, uh, couple months. You know, processing those patients, you know, reading out those studies. Um, it's a little bit different than my general fellowship, which was a lot more you know, hands-on with patients, mm -hmm. um, CCU. Uh, general consults, you know, the floors. Um, so it's it's really nice in cardiology that you have the ability to, um, you know, focus on what you're interested in. In my case, it was imaging, but you always have that connection to the patients. You know, you, you will always have to take care of patients and see them in the outpatient and inpatient, which I really like. Okay. Uh, what is something that you find interesting that kind of below the surface of cardiology that isn't, you know, as mainstream as people might expect? Yeah, so... Um, I think people sometimes don't recognize how much uh, we focus on um, the evidence-based parts of, of cardiology. We really, really, as cardiologists, like to see data supporting the decisions that we make. Um, and you know, you learn a lot of things in medical school, but a lot of that changes with time. Mm -hmm. um, and really staying on top of the most current literature and understanding sort of uh, where the field is going is, is, is critical in cardiology. So um, I would say kind of the sort of evidence-based approach and, and really focusing on the data, you know, learning what is, is, uh, is good data and what is bad data and sort of being able to filter that out is, is important. That's a big part of uh, our education here at the right. University of Pittsburgh. We had some courses evidence-based medicine yeah. where we learned to evaluate different studies and how to incorporate into, or how it typically gets incorporated into clinical practice. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, now we're at our three Q's part, yeah. the three Q's <laughs> interviews. Uh, question number one. Sure. What's the most interesting tool or the most important tool you carry with you uh, to see patients? Well, I mean, as a cardiologist, uh, most important tool definitely has to be a stethoscope. Um, and, uh, you know, knowing how to use the stethoscope uh, in the right ways, uh, not only, um, you know, from, you know, a physical exam um, location way, but also, um, you know, using, knowing when to use the, the bell and the diaphragm is, is really important to listen to sort of listen to different sounds. Um, also, the stethoscope is can be kind of uh, a utilitarian tool. <laughs> you know, you can use it as a reflex hammer. Um, you know, you can you know 
if you measure the width of the of the stethoscope, you kind of know that that's X number of centimeters. So if you need to like measure something and don't have a, a ruler on hand, you can kind of use the, the the length of the stethoscope. Three, so, three stethoscopes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three stethoscopes. So you know, it, it's it's something you always have to keep on you, regardless of if you're a cardiologist or not. I think, um, but it's uh, I, you know, obviously the, the most important tool we use. And in our, in our, during our course, when I spent time with you, that was the first time I really heard true murmurs. Yeah. That was that was a really cool experience. Yeah, yeah. Okay, question number two, we're going to go with what's a common myth or something that you get from your patients that you want to dispel? Yeah, so the big thing that I think is still sort of lurking out there on, on the internet and uh, you know, Dr. Google is that uh, statins are harmful. Um, I've had a number of patients, you know, come up to me or, or sort of uh, refuse to take statins because of what they've heard, uh, you know, not even sort of real things. Some people think, you know, that it, it truly accelerates diabetes. People saying that um, uh, statins cause memory loss and Alzheimer's as well. And th that data does not exist really. Um, and, uh, you know, if the, the benefit of statins is enormous. So, you know, if there is a medicine and the indication is there, um, that you know, one of the best things you can do is to put a patient on a statin if they have the indication. Um, and really trying to, to dispel those rumors, make people understand that um, that's you know, the, the, the bad things that people say about statin you know, really aren't there. Um, it's one of the biggest things I'd say as a cardiologist. Okay, and number three, if you could give some wisdom uh, to a young medical student that's interested in cardiology, thinks they want to do it, do you have some advice? Yeah, sure. So. You know, with cardiology, you really have to like the physics, like the, um, you know, like the like the fluid dynamics and, and how the heart works. Um, obviously, so there has to be some you know interest there, but also you know doing research is really um, important. Not only from your own um, you know ability to learn how research is done, but also to kind of learn uh, learn a little bit more in depth about cardiology. So if that's something you have an interest in. Try and do a research project in it. Um, you know, every step along the way, you know, from medical school to, till, till now, I've continued to do research. Um, and every time you do a project, you learn a little bit more about um, some, some specificity or some specific thing within cardiology. Um, and I think that's enormously, you know, an enormous benefit for, uh, for a person to kind of, you know, show that interest, show that they can, um, understand these concepts and you know, make a, you know, make an abstract or a paper out of it. I think that's great. Okay, so we got always carry your stethoscope, yep. take your statins, and get involved, do some research. Yeah, Dr. Cater. Yeah. All right, it's nice to see you again. Thank you very much. Take care.